Hi everyone, I'm Tammy, the creator of the blog and this YouTube channel called Nutmeg Notebook. So I just got done batch cooking potatoes and squash. And so I told my husband, Tom, let's do an impromptu live YouTube video just to show everybody. So we follow a whole plant food lifestyle that's SOS free, that stands for salt, oil, and sugar, but no worries, it all tastes absolutely delicious. So uh, starch is a really big part of our diet, and so I want to show you about that. Before, we'll do just a little bit of housekeeping. So my husband, Tom, is off camera, but he's going to be moderating comments. I'll be joining so you in just a bit. He'll be joining in a minute. And so if you have any questions, if you could preface the questions in the comments with four question marks, then ask your question, and then end with four question marks, that just helps <laughs> for the questions to pop out to him so that he can okay. see them. Yeah, You're laughing off camera. Well, there's all these squashes where I'm supposed to be. Well, I can move these. Well, let me see. He's gonna turn, he's gonna come on screen because Apparently, you guys are being pretty funny no, or something. No, no, I just... I, You're laughing at me? I was me. laughing that all the squashes were in my spot. And I'm, I'm being, so sorry. I'm being replaced by <laughs> by this stuff. Do so, you know the names of all these? There will be a quiz. I know a lady that knows the names <laughs> to all these. Uh -huh. There you go. That works. It's all in who you know. So, so. Um, we do follow a starch-based bla starch diet. And so potatoes figure into our diet quite heavily. I love potatoes. Tom tends to like grains a little more. And we're going to talk about, about all of that as well. But we get so many questions regarding how to bake potatoes and what, what are Japanese sweet potatoes and what are Hannah yams and where can we buy them. So we don't have Hawaiian sweet potatoes. I we don't have Hawaiian. Reeds is asking about Hawaiian sweet potatoes. Yeah, you know we've never bought them. Um, Chef she says AJ, she needs them. She uh, needs them. She needs them. Chef AJ has brought some uh -huh. with her when she has come to visit us, and they are absolutely delicious. And so she is like the authority on how to cook the Hawaiian sweet potatoes, and you do have to special order those, and you know buy a whole case at a time but you can get those from hawaii and so um and they are delicious but i have never sprung for those i i've heard that it's inconsistent like sometimes you get them and they're really tiny and sometimes they're big and um so i've never i have never done that but let's talk about potatoes they are very low in calorie they're full of fiber they have um a lot of vitamins and minerals in them so they're really healthy for us to eat. What was bad about potatoes in our prior diet was that they were usually fried. So most people only ate like a white potato and it was either made into French fries or potato chips, right? With a lot of fat, a lot of salt. And although that was really delicious, that was not a healthy way to be eating a healthy food. Um, you know, they just... Um, remember the Lay's potato chip commercial? You can't that you can't just eat just one. Well, that was so true, mm -hmm. right? Has anybody ever opened up a bag of chips and eaten one? So we gave all that junk up to be able to eat this beautiful food that we have here. So we also eat according to the calorie density chart. And so potatoes and winter squash are a great value for the amount of calories that they have. And so if you're trying to lose weight, you want to incorporate a lot of winter squash and potatoes into your diet. So potatoes are around 400 calories per pound and winter squash is grouped in that same group, but some of them like a butternut squash is around like, um, two to 300 calories. So they're really a wonderful bargain because they're so full of water and fiber. They will fill us up and, and they help release serotonin, which is the kind of like the comfort hormone that makes us feel calm and 
peaceful. And some people swear by eating a potato at night helps them sleep better. So what do we have here? So these are Yukon Gold potatoes. And for like a basic white potato, this is probably my uh, favorite one. And I, I cook all of this at 400 degrees. I have a convection oven and it holds, it'll allow me to put um, three racks in it. And so I just set it to 400 degrees and I roasted the potatoes as well as a kabocha squash all at the same time. I just lined my baking sheets with the um, silicone mats and nothing sticks to them and I don't have to use any oil. The only potatoes that I pierce are the Yukon Gold potatoes. Otherwise, they can explode. And um, I forgot to pierce one of them before baking them one time. This was a few months ago. And it did indeed explode in my oven. Thank goodness it stayed contained um, within the baking sheet. So that was very fortunate. So, um, and this is kabocha squash, and I'm gonna show you the squashes and talk about them, but I want you to see that this actually gets caramelized with no oil. It's fantastic. If you don't have the Silpat mats, you can use parchment paper. Just line them with parchment paper. It makes for easy cleanup too, but you know, not as friendly to the environment. But anyway, I just, um, Oh, here's what I want to tell you about the kabocha squash. So this is what a kabocha squash looks like. I take and I scrub it really good um, in my kitchen sink with some warm water and a vegetable um, brush. If it's really dirty, I have some vegetable wash that I bought in the produce department at Trader Joe's and I'll just put that on here and then give it a good scrub because this is organic and we can eat the skin. And so then I take and I pierce it with a, a paring knife several times, you know, six, eight times. And then I put it in my microwave for three to four minutes. A smaller one like this, I would do for three minutes. That What that does is it softens it up enough that I can cut it without hurting myself. Uh, especially if Tom's not around. If Tom's not, if Tom's here, he can just you cut know, it. I tried that though, and that is a major game changer. It's much safer. It is. It's like dangerous to cut these things open, especially if you don't get rid of this somehow. Right, um, which is the, hard to do. It's hard to get rid of that until for, it's Yeah, Mother Nature up. glued those on there really good. So, yes. So yeah, the microwave trick on these is, is something you want to do mm -hmm. because it just makes it a lot safer to open and up. And I've been doing that for years because when we started eating a lot of squash, I thought, wow, I've got to have a safe way to do that. And so then once I get it cut, in half, then I'm able to cut off the stem end as well as the bottom. You can see this has a, a piece of the root left on here, or the vine, not the root, but the vine. And then I can just cut it into these beautiful wedges. And this is my preferred way to cook it, but you can also steam it. So if you have a steaming pot um, that you can just put on your stove top, and put water in it, put the steaming basket in there, and then put your cut squash in there and steam it until it's fork tender. And that's another way to also do it. Is this a spaghetti squash? That's a spaghetti We're squash. Talk about that in a bit. I'm gonna tell everybody okay. about those. We'll talk about spaghetti in just a little bit. All right. Okay, so I just I had everything in the oven. Um, at the same time. Today I actually cooked these in the Breville, but I just had my um, Breville Smart Oven Air just on the bake cycle, and I just baked these at 400, and then I had two trays of the squash. This was one squash, and it was about the size of this one, okay? And out of the squashes, the kabocha is probably my favorite, because it's very what I, I, dense, I guess I want to say, and it's sweet but not too sweet, and so it goes well with either savory dishes or to have it a little sweeter with like a little bit of vinegar on it. And um, I don't turn it over when I'm um, baking it. 
I just let it caramelize on one side. It's very tender. And so a lot of times if you go to flip it over in the middle of cooking, it can break. Usually I will trade the trays. So the caramelization in my oven happens on the bottom shelf. And today I forgot to switch the trays so that both of them would get caramelized. So one's soft and sweet and the other one's caramelized. Yeah, this one you can see didn't get um, caramelized. It's still going to be amazingly delicious though. And so you can um, take this and cut it up and put it in salads. You can put it in, we like to make what we call nourish bowls where you have greens and either grain or squash and some beans. And then you can do a sauce over the top of it. If you want, you can do salad dressing. You can use balsamic vinegar. You can use a flavored balsamic vinegar. You know we love all of the vinegars from California Balsamic. And Tom can link to those in the show notes. They're in there. They're already all, all, in there. All of our Okay. Uh, standard links are in there. Oh, right. And so for California Balsamic, we have no affiliation with them. But if you put Nutmeg Notebook in the message box at checkout, you'll get two free small sample um, items of vinegar, which is really fun. So, um, and did I say, I, I, I just can eat these like a plate of these with some greens. They're candy and call it a yeah. meal. I like it cut up and put over a chopped salad. Also in the Buddha bowl, if you want more of a dressing and you don't want to make your own oil-free dressing, Dylan from Well Your World has a whole line of sauces and salad dressings that we absolutely love. We do have an affiliate link for that and that is in the show notes. So like the Sweet Heat, the Everything Asian, the in Everything Indian, um, you know, whatever is your favorite, the, any kind of dressing would be great on these. Or they perfectly delicious, standalone, all by themselves. Before you now, jump to the next thing. Yes. You're on a roll with these potatoes. So I'm on a roll? Yeah. In our thumbnail, we put this, I mean, we decided to do this video like 15 minutes before we went live. Yeah, so like, we were like these had five minutes left and I was like... Maybe we should do a video and, and answer people's questions about potatoes. So in the quick setup, we shot the opening little picture with Tammy and some of the potatoes in it. And I forgot to close the pantry. Jesse spotted the pantry door was open. Oh, there's lots of stuff in there, huh, Jesse? <laughs> she thought it was well organized. <laughs> Thank you. It is well organized, actually. It is pretty neat and clean. And we did a video, of a pantry tour video. And I, you know, it does get messy occasionally and I have to go in and clean it up more. Okay, so over here, can you see this? This pan is too hot. What pan is too hot? This one. Really? Because, yeah, because I, I just pulled it out. I don't think I can... I'll, I think I can switch it. Let me just grab a pot holder oh, here. I'm trying to bring it to the center. I'm going to bring it to the center. Are we going to play a game of hot potato? That's right. Hot potato. Okay, so these are Hannah yams, and these are one of Tom's favorites. Um, they are kind of a cross between a Japanese sweet potato and a like a Yukon Gold. So they taste sweeter than a Yukon Gold, but they're not as sweet as a Japanese sweet potato. So, and I, he just has these usually like as a snack or if his meal isn't quite satisfying him, then he will eat one of these. If my serving is seemingly small, then I supplement with a hand. Right. Yeah. And then these are the Japanese sweet potatoes. And if you have followed me for very long, you know I love Japanese sweet potatoes. They are my favorite sweet potato. And I usually have one every day. Usually it's at lunchtime, but it kind of just kind of depends. This is a Stokes and this is a purple potato and it's obviously, mm. I'm going to show them. I'll get to that. Oh, but go ahead if you want to. This, this is Tom's, one of Tom's favorites. Stokes are mine. My, Stokes are my potatoes. So Those look at the beautiful color. Pur how purple that is. It's gorgeous. It, yeah, it does show up here. It's just a deep, a deep purple. It's amazing. Oh, you know, I'm going to need a knife for this one because I, okay. the, I didn't cut one of these right. open. Okay, so then this is just the regular old orange sweet potato. I'm not sh exactly sure if this is the garnet yam or, or what because this was one from Costco. They are organic, but all it said on it was yams or sweet potato. Wait, it said sweet potato. That's all it said on it. So then I wasn't sure, like, mm. What is it? I'm going to let you cut that in half off screen so we can show. 
So here's the deal. These get baked for about one hour and then they're done. When you can um, pierce it and it goes in and comes out very easily, then the potato is done. Oh, beautiful, thank you, honey. And so here is that sweet potato. So I'm gonna put it here with the rest of my little collection that we have going. Now, for the sweet potatoes, the Japanese sweet potatoes, the Hana yams, um, the garnets, I do, uh, or the stokes, I do not pierce them. I do not cut the ends off. I know somebody said, I think it was in one of Dylan's videos, that Tammy from Nutmeg Notebook cuts the tips off of her potatoes, her sweet potatoes. No, I don't. Somebody else maybe does, but it wasn't me. That I don't do that. And I don't pierce them because I have found when I, if I do pierce them, then all those wonderful sweet juices seem to leak out. And I want to retain all of those. So the sweet potatoes, Japanese sweet potatoes, and the Hannah's and the Stokes, I bake those for an hour and 20 minutes because that seems to be the right amount of time in my oven for them to become as sweet as they can be. If they're just a little more cooked and a little softer, they're sweeter. And then something magical absolutely happens once you refrigerate these. So we take these and we put them in the refrigerator and then once they're chilled, we like to reheat them. I, but I will eat these cold too. These make a great on the go, you know, morning breakfast on the go, a snack. Um, they're wonderful to take hiking with you on a bike ride. You can just, you know, put them in a plastic container that's about the same size as they are or wrap them in parchment paper and then wrap them in foil and you can keep them hot for quite some time that way and it's wonderful to have them on a bike ride or when you're out hiking or of course we always take them with us on road trips so an, about an hour and 20 minutes works best for that um, then for the the regular yams, I usually do these about an hour. Now, if you need to save time, you can cut these sweet potatoes, any of these sweet potatoes in half, and then put the cut side down on your silpat mat, and they will cook in about half the amount of time. So my daughter, what she does with the, just the regular um, yams or sweet potatoes like this, is she cuts them in half, and then she sprinkles them with cinnamon and then she turns them down, the cut side down on um, parchment paper or a silpat mat, and she roasts them for about 35 minutes, and they are so delicious. And so then you have that cinnamon in there, and then she takes them out of the skin, puts them in her Vitamix with a, some applesauce and just a little bit of water, and she makes this wonderful, it's almost like a pudding, but her kids will eat it for any meal in an, in addition You're talking to about the capote yeah, yeah whatever the meal is and they absolutely love it in fact we all do if they don't want to eat it we're very happy to step in and eat it so you have a question tom yeah ts is asking if there's bad spots on the sweet potatoes or even regular potatoes do you cut them out before baking or do you wait until they're done you know, it depends. If it's really small, sometimes I'll just leave it so that the potato doesn't dry out. And then after they're um, done, I'll, sometimes I won't even cut them off then. I'll wait until we go to actually eat them and then cut it out. But it just depends. If it's a really big spot, then I might go ahead and, and cut it because it's kind of icky looking. Um, but I don't usually have bad spots on our potatoes we're pretty lucky that you know we're able to buy them and bake them and um, get them used mm. before they do get bad but i know what you're mm. talking about and then jeanette kelly had a question on potatoes to, re to reiterate the um temperature time piercing versus the temperature okay. and time so the, and piercing and no piercing the temperature and i have another video all about this but we just get so many questions I, we do have a video um, all about potatoes I do what works best in my oven, and you kind of have to play around and see what works best in your oven. I'm using a convection oven. I'm setting it at 400 degrees, 
and I'm putting three racks of potato, three pans of potatoes in there on three racks. And I pierce the only, the Yukon Golds are the only ones I pierce. Or if I was roasting um, the russets, I would pierce the russets. So just the white potatoes, I pierce. The sweet potatoes, I do not pierce any of them, but I roast everything at 400 degrees. Yukon Golds or russets, usually about an hour. It depends on the size. When they start getting big, or if you get those really big russets from like Costco, those can take longer than an hour. So the test is to either use a like a butter knife or a fork, and when the when it will easily go in and come out without resistance, then that's when they should be done. I do not pierce any of the sweet potatoes, mm -hmm. and the just the regular sweet potatoes. I usually do. A, I bake for about an hour at 400 degrees in the convection. It depends on how big they are. The same with the Japanese sweet potatoes and the Hana yams. If they're bigger than this one, which I don't know how much this weighs. Would you go weigh it, Tom? Well, it I'm weighed, guessing weighed, a, about 12 to 16 ounces. It might have been 16 before you cooked it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, okay. So sometimes the, if they're bigger than this, they'll take longer. Sometimes I'll do them an hour and a half or an hour and 40 minutes because for a while there, we were only able to get really huge ones. And for a while, all we could get were really small ones that got done. It was crazy. That got mm -hmm. done in just over an hour. So how long is gonna depend on how hot your oven runs, how full it is. When I have it really packed full and the trays are tight with a lot of potatoes, it, it will take longer because the hot air isn't mm -hmm. circulating as good. And so I just have to test them. And so it's not a hard, fast answer. It's at least an hour and to an hour and a half, depending on the size of the potato. Susan That's Johnson right. has a good question. Does yes. it matter the temperature and time, whether it's in the in your Breville or in the wall oven? Yeah, it doesn't seem to be. I did these for an hour today, even though they were in the Breville, which is a smaller oven. But a lot of times things will cook faster in that, just because I think it's just such a small um, space and it and it's it really seems to run hot so now I want to show you so this is the Yukon gold and this is what they look like inside and I just like them because they taste really creamy and delicious without anything on them in fact the first time that I served um, some of these to our son when he came home to visit he lives about 30 miles away and he, he was like mom what did you do to those potatoes? They're so good. And I said, I just baked them. He's like, yeah, but how did you season them? I was like, I didn't do anything to them. These just taste really good. They're a little bit golden in color. They make wonderful mashed potatoes too. And I just think, you know, just because of the color, it kind of makes you think that they're buttery. And then this is that beautiful Stokes purple potato. So it has purple flesh and the purple inside. And I want to say, Wherever you live, in the comments, if you could write in the comments where you live and where you're able to find Japanese sweet potatoes or Hannah yams or whatever they might be called where you live or Stokes, that would be really helpful for people because we get emails all the time from people saying, where do I buy Japanese sweet potatoes, where do I buy Hannah's? Well, I only know where you can buy them where I live. And so if you don't live in Northern California, I don't know. I, that's why we're gonna rely on you guys to help each other out about where you buy them. Then this is the Japanese sweet potato. This is what it looks like on the outside. It has kind of a purple reddish skin to it. And then inside- It's not orange, it's not purple. No. It's creamy. It's creamy like a Yukon Gold. Yeah, it's kind of off-white. And I've scored it because what we like to do after they have come out of the refrigerator, because that's where we store them, we like to air fry these. And I learned from my friend Shada, if you score it, then those little edges get kind of crispy. So I kind of score it like a pineapple. So I go diagonally one way and then diagonally the opposite way and then I put them in the air fryer at 400 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes and it just depends on your air fryer too so you kind of have to experiment and then here is that Hannah and the Hannah has that 
just kind of a tan color on the outside, almost like a Yukon gold. And then inside, it almost looks like the um, Japanese sweet potato. And people have told me that the Japanese sweet potatoes, some places are called Jersey yams. It, some places, the Hannahs are called white sweet potatoes. So they could be called different names depending on where you live. Then this is just the regular sweet potato. And you all know it's kind of orangey on the outside and definitely orangey on the inside. It is not as sweet as the Japanese sweet potato. Sometimes these are sweeter than the Hannah's though. Which one do you think is sweeter? The, the regular sweet potato or the Hannah? The Hannah, the, the regular sweet potato, you know, is a different- Flavor. It's a different profile. It mm -hmm. doesn't quite, it's not in the same family as the Hannah's and the JSP's. Yeah. It's, it's like a utility sweet potato. I used to eat these all as a utility <laughs> sweet potato. It's, <laughs> there it's you go. a good potato. It's a good potato. Hannah's and, and JSPs are great potatoes. There you go. There you go. And you know, it's never good to follow great with good. You can only follow good with great. There you go. Or something That's right. deeply philosophical that way. There you go. You're trying. Well, I was going to try to stand that one up, but I cannot. Okay, so I'm going to put that. We'll get we'll get Reeves and Dylan to explain it next week. Okay, maybe. is that still on camera so people can see that? It is. Okay, Because I lowered perfect. the camera angle. Perfect. Because your height's perfect for camera angles. Oh, are you saying I'm short? You wouldn't say I that. I would just say that I'm sitting down and she's standing up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's not nice. I didn't say anything about your height. I just said what I was doing. Okay. What you were doing. All right. So um, this is a delicata squash, and it's, it's just pretty. It's fun. So I like to, I pretty much cook them all the same way. So again, this one I can actually mm. cut in half without microwaving it to soften it first. And then you can either cut it in half the long way if you want and scoop out the seeds. And then you can turn it the cut side down on a sill pat and you can roast it. Or what's really fun is to just leave it whole like this and cut it into rings. And then just use a small spoon to scrape out the seeds and the membrane. Is that the one that makes little stars? Well, it's not stars, but they, you know, it's got that ripple, yeah. that ripple look yeah. to it. And then put them on a sill pat and roast them and you can flip them over halfway um, in between. And just to, how long is just gonna depend on how big of one you have. So maybe about 25, 30 minutes. And it, they're just really pretty and they're great on a salad or just to eat. Um, with some beans and some greens, and just it's so fun. I just love them. Then this. Oh, but we have one more follow-up yes, potato, yes, yes, potato question into, sure. before you go deeper into. Before you go deeper into. I'm getting like hungry, looking at all this stuff. Um, there was a question about oh about the dark the Stokes potato. Yes. You, from Jeanette Kelly, do you find the purple skin white potatoes turn black on the inside when you store them in the fridge? We have not this had... Per, so that's the JSPs, the purple skinned white potatoes. I think she means the, these. Have you ever found those? Is that right, Jeanette? Uh, no, they don't. No, we have not found that to happen. Now, you'll notice that around the edge, sometimes they get a little bit darker, and that is where those juices have come out and caramelized, and then it kind of stains it on the edge. And, uh, you yeah, can see that, and you can see that on this one, too. And that is, yeah. it's like super sweet right yeah. there and delicious and sticky. You can see mm -hmm. I'm getting the, the sweet juices all over my fingers. Yeah. Yes, and another then, question. Yeah, before we transition sure. on to squash, um, you mentioned earlier that I think you put vinegars on the squash. And so there was just a quick question about, uh, is, does Thomas ship to Canada? Yes, he will ship to Canada. That's so, from Jolene. Does so, anyone know if California balls like ships to Canada? He yeah. does. So I would email him and inquire about what the cost of shipping is. And I don't then, know if it's different if you're in Quebec or British Columbia or. And then he can he can help advise you on what the most economical way is to do it. So, but I know he has shipped to um, other people in Canada. So I also wanted to. Did I talk about? Um, so as far as calorie density goes, 
potatoes and squash are less calorie, um, have less calories per pound than our whole grains like brown rice and quinoa and millet and all of the grains. So if you are in weight loss mode and you are struggling, you might try to cut back on the amount of grains that you're having and go for more potatoes and more winter squash because you get all the benefits of the carbohydrates that we need and we need those for fuel for our brain and our muscles and just for our energy. So you'll get all the benefits of that, but, and it's also very filling. And I find that potatoes and winter squash are more filling to me than grains like brown rice. Now, Tom eats a lot of brown rice and that works great for him, but you know, his physiology and his metabolism are different than mine. I find that I do better eating potatoes and squash. So, so anyway, that's just something to be aware of and that you might want to um, try changing things up. I also find that I can very easily overeat on quinoa or millet or brown rice. And I am less likely to overeat on potatoes and squash because these are just so much more filling to me and maybe more satisfying because I feel like they have a lot more flavor than the grains do. So anyway, that's just food for thought. So then um, this is a red curry squash, which is really fun, it's pretty. And I cook it the same way that I do the kabocha. So scrub it really good, pierce it, microwave it for about maybe three minutes in my microwave. Again, you have to play with your microwave. And then you can um, cut it open, scrape out the seeds, and you can do wedges of it and either steam it or you can cook it in the oven 400 degrees, probably about 35, 40 minutes. And then acorn squash. And I love acorn squash. It's something that my mom made when I was a kid growing up. And so in the winter months, she would make acorn squash. Of course, she would cut it in half and then she would put butter and brown sugar and cinnamon in it. And so we don't do that, but um, I love to stuff these. And so I have a uh, curry quinoa stuffed acorn squash recipe that's on the blog and you can just google that you know curry um, quinoa stuffed acorn squash nutmeg notebook and the recipe should come up and then I also have a Mexican version to do that with this and same thing pierce it I would probably only microwave this one for about two minutes um, because it's so much smaller and then cut it open, scoop out everything that's inside of it, and then put the face, the cut side face down at 400 degrees and roast it until it's tender. And I do like these to get kind of caramelized like this on the um, cut edge because it makes for a really beautiful presentation. And then um, I like to stuff it and then sprinkle pomegranate seeds the um, pomegranates all over the top of it because it looks really pretty or you could do some dried fruit if you want to do dried fruit but I also like to stuff these just for myself for an evening meal is and do taco lentils in it and then some of the chipotle nacho cheese sauce because I really like the flavor of the spicy food with contrast with the sweetness of the acorn squash so so that's just another thought and then the spaghetti squash. I have a question on the spaghetti yes. squash. Yes. I got to go up and find it because it was real early. Okay, while well, you're doing that, talking, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll tell it. a story. Okay. And so, oh, and I want to tell you guys, like Whole Foods has, um, they run specials every once in a while on their organic winter squashes. So you want to watch for that if you have a Whole Foods. And if you have a Trader Joe's, they carry organic squash as well, which is, um, and they have really great price because rather than selling it per pound, they sell it uh, a flat price per item. And so when they do that, then I won't buy a small kabocha like this. I'll buy the biggest one that they have and really stretch my dollar that way. Now, this is a spaghetti squash. I thought I was being really clever one time 
and I had read online on how to make one in the microwave and so I was microwaving it and it blew up. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you remember that? Mm -hmm. It was the biggest mess ever. I mean, the strands, the so I remember shell. A I remember a noise. I mean, it made Well, a, yeah, it made a terrible noise. It went boom, yeah. Yeah, it went boom and it, it literally exploded in the microwave. Um, and I had pierced it, so I don't know what went wrong with that. But anyway, I, I never did make them in the microwave after that. I had done it previously and it had worked. So I do this the same way. I cut it in half, take the seeds out and put it face down and just oven roast it. And then you can get the strands come out. You just use a fork to pull the strands out. And then it's kind of spaghetti-like. And I think that um, the Gerudis have I think um, Jessica did a video on how to make it in the instant how to you cook mean it. Brittany? No. Oh, I'm saying the wrong one. Crocs in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm getting them confused. I'm getting my girls confused. Crocs in the kitchen. Jessica from Crocs in the kitchen. I think she did a video on how to cook one of these in a pressure cooker, an electric pressure cooker. And I haven't tried that, but you might want to check that out and see how that goes. We don't have a spaghetti squash video. We don't have a spaghetti okay. squash right. video. I found but my question. I like, okay, but I like, to, I like to have this, and then um, you can either just put, like, squeeze lemon juice over it and some fresh chopped sage, and then if you have some faux parm, which I have a recipe for a really yummy faux parmesan, and sprinkle that over, that's really good. Or do my classic marinara sauce. We have a video on that and the recipe is on the blog and you can add cooked lentils to that which makes it really hearty and then that is delicious over spaghetti squash and then some of the faux yeah. parm on top and, of that. And finding any of those recipes that she just mentioned is as easy as going to Google, the main Google and typing in nutmeg notebook faux parm or nutmeg notebook marinara or just put nutmeg notebook in front of whatever the name of the food is and, right. and it, Google will bring it to the video and the blog post as well if there is one. Okay, so okay, I wanted to show you guys, these do, are Tom's. Do I get to ask my question about the spaghetti squash? Oh yes, I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay, we're asking the question now. <laughs> do I sound like anybody you know? Sweet yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Diane is asking, do you peel spaghetti squash? I learned that it makes it way easier to stir into a sauce before you cook it, I would presume. Oh, I have never done that. So I have always cooked it with the skin on and then just scraped out. And it kind the, of comes out in the strand. And it comes out in the strand. A fork or spoon. So with a fork. So I have, I have never peeled this. And I don't peel the kabocha squash and I don't peel the um, yeah. red curry squash. Yeah. And I cooked my butternut squash a couple weeks ago, so I don't have one of those to show you. But I do, I like butternut squash um, as well, and I cook it the same way. Cut it in half, take out the seeds, turn the cut side down, and just oven roast it. That's my favorite way to make it. Or if I'm gonna use it in like a super stew or something like that, then I will peel it and cube it. And But it is really tough to peel. You need one of those, um, uh, the peeler where the the vegetable peeler where the it's like a Y shape and that is it does a, a long swipe on it and that works best but I honestly I prefer to buy the butternut squash already peeled and cubed either at Trader Joe's or at Whole Foods it just makes everything go um, or Costco not Whole Foods it's too expensive at Whole Foods mm. already peeled but Costco sells butternut squash organic already peeled and cubed as and so does trader joe's and while we're talking about peeling yes um did you mention and i might have been reading you might have said this we actually eat the skins on the kabocha these little crescents you see here yes we the skin is a tasty wonderfully chewy part of that it is and yeah. and you can usually like the red curry because they get really soft if you make um chef aj's kabocha smoky kabocha squash soup it's one of my favorites i love it and you just blend the, the um, skin right in that soup. And we eat the skins on all of the potatoes. I buy all organic potatoes and we eat the skins. 
And then before I so rudely interrupted Tom, I was gonna show you these little potatoes. These are little organic potatoes. They're kind of like creamer potatoes or new potatoes. And we buy a big bag of these at Costco. And Tom likes these. He likes to um, put these in his um, steamed vegetables that he has at lunchtime. Dump soup. Dump soup. <laughs> and um, sometimes I will take them and cut them in half and I will either air fry them or I will oven roast them. And if I'm going to oven roast them, I'll just mix in a little bit of vegetable broth, some fresh garlic. If I have fresh rosemary or if I don't, I'll use dry rosemary and a little bit of pepper and they're really delicious that way. And just, you know, a fun little um, potato to add to any of your nourish bowls or just on a plate with, you know, a veggie patty and some salad is really good. You mentioned Alfredo sauce a little bit ago. I didn't, but I didn't. Did I say Alfredo sauce? Oh, Alfredo sauce is good on the spaghetti squash I, too. I, am I hearing things? Yeah, I, don't I thought think you I said, said something putting Alfredo sauce on. No, the... I talked about the classic marinara. Oh, okay. But if you want to talk about Alfredo, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alfredo sauce. This, we have an advanced copy. Well, those of you on the East Coast may have gotten your health science magazine. Um, Already. Uh, many of you did sign up to be members of the National Health Association, mm -hmm. so you will be getting this magazine. And, and so the Nutmeg Notebook recipes start here with the, the, the red-haired lady is in there. Is it showing up? Yeah. And so there's, uh, there's seven total so recipes excited. in there. So anyway, so there's your preview. There's the chutney at the very bottom. So they did, so, a, they so, did a really wonderful job. I submitted, a, I think I submitted eight recipes and they were able to fit seven of them into the magazine, the fall issue, and that is being mailed out. Um, so people will yeah. be receiving and them over the next few days. Well, we have a special announcement. Yes. Uh, uh, Mark, Mark Huberman, the director, emailed us and said that if people sign up for the NHA within the next two, two weeks, weeks that he will... You can request to get the fall, the fall issue. Even so, though it's already been mailed, he yeah. will mail it to you special. Yeah. So so he's put it, because it costs him like, you know, five times as much to send out an individual mailing like that. But they will do that for two weeks. For those of you that, that haven't already signed up, many of you did. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for supporting the National Health Association. Um, but if you get signed up now because you haven't, then you will still get a copy of this particular yes, issue. Yes, you do have to request that they send you the fall issue, but he said he will absolutely do that for the next two weeks for people. So that's very yeah, exciting. And, and the link is in the show notes down below yeah. for the NHA. And so my Alfredo sauce recipe is in there, which, which is what, what made triggered, Tom think. Which, which, there was a brain think connection there. And know. then I created two new recipes that are only available in the magazine. And one is the apple oat crisp. And the other is a wonderful cranberry chutney. So both of those recipes are really delicious. And I found organic cranberries, fresh cranberries, at Costco this week. So I'm all set to make a new batch of the cranberry Ch chutney. chutney. And cool. it's really good. It has pineapple and apples in it and raisins. And um, it, it's really delicious. So I, I hope you guys mm. will subscribe to Health Science Magazine. Yeah, and on their website, if you're, if you're in a different country, they do have some uh, different rates for other countries. I know Canada is $55 instead of 35 and there's some more tiers in their uh, levels. Depending I'm, on where you're at, because it at. costs so, more to So take to a look on the cipher, though, because uh, not everybody lives here. So, Right. Uh, okay, where are you next? Have you done acorn yet? Or Yes, I did acorn. I did. I covered all of the squashes. So if anybody has any questions about potatoes, and is anybody writing in the comments the, where you buy your potatoes, where you live and where you buy your potatoes? A number of people that Sherry Sanders got her magazine today. Yay! It's so okay. exciting to get it. Yeah, I subscribed to it for my mom and our son and our daughter. And so I'm real excited for them to get the magazine and read all the wonderful articles. I mean, not only do you get a nice recipe layout in each magazine, but you also get amazing articles and it's all based on science. And so we love that. Okay. Um... Yeah, Infinity Love and Gratitude. Jesse had been meaning to join for over two years, but the conferences kept getting selling. Yeah, the conferences do sell out. 
they are posting next they, they are planning a conference for next june it's the site is up and you can enroll now and it does sell out and we are planning on attending as long as everything goes well with the pandemic um, between now and then and, air, and i air will travel actually being safe and, yes and i will actually be doing a cooking demonstration yes um so tom and i are planning on attending and we're going in early we're going to go in um, on Thursday and they have some special things planned on Friday like you can go for a hike and do some mm -hmm. different things and then we probably won't come home until Monday so that we have Sunday night to just sit around and visit with everyone so so if you're interested you can go on the National Health Association website and you can register already and it does it sells out every year so you want to not procrastinate Okay. All right. Um, we are. Um, oh, here's a question from uh, Stephanie uh, that I missed earlier. Do you do you ever boil your potatoes in water and then mash them? And if so, do you keep the skins on when you mash? Okay. So I make my mashed potatoes in the pressure cooker, and I have a recipe and a YouTube video for garlic mashed potatoes. And when I'm making them just for Tom and I, I leave the skin Absolutely. on because we love them that way. But our daughter does not like the skin left on mashed potatoes. And so if I'm making them for a family meal, then I will go ahead and peel them. Um, I usually only boil the potatoes if I'm needing some potatoes for like the cheese sauce, either Donna's uh, cheese sauce, which is a recipe that's on the blog, or for my nacho, chipotle nacho cheese sauce. And if I need potatoes and carrots for that, then I'll usually just put them in um, a bowl with a little bit of water and just microwave them. And that seems to be the quickest way for me. And I usually do peel them for that. Although I think the last time I made cheese sauce, I did leave the skins on. And I don't think we noticed any difference really because the Vitamix makes it, blends it up so good. So but, I did all that peeling last two batches I was and I didn't say, have but, to? But Tom's been making the cheese sauce. I don't like, care if there's little skin bits in there. Potato, no, you know what? Is a we, drag. Didn't, we didn't even notice it. I do think it made it thicker. And uh -huh. so we might need to add a little more, more water. water to it. Okay. I have an experiment coming up. Yeah, because you need yeah. to make cheese sauce yet yeah. okay. today. Okay, here's, here's a little aside. Jo oh, and I was going to oh. say, and besides all of this, yesterday Tom made a batch of brown rice, and then he makes that in the pressure cooker, and then he divides it up into four cup containers, and we freeze it. And that way um, he can just pull out one container at a time, and you usually only have to make rice maybe once every week and a half. half. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it so doesn't that quite was a, sync up. It doesn't sync up with potatoes and batch prepping salads necessarily. Right. I sometimes wind up doing it midweek, but I got to have that. Like when I go out to the freezer to grab a cube of soup, I call it a cube of soup now because it's all cubes. From yeah, the super cubes. Super cubes. But and then I. I throw a cup of rice on there onto a one cup cube of soup and I've got myself a full meal deal. Mm -hmm. So that works out great. So he did mm -hmm. that and then today I also, in addition to this, I made 12 salads and then um, the pressure cooker just got done and I have a batch of my um, split pea and yam soup in the pressure cooker and I'm anxious to see how it turned out. I was a little bit shy on the split peas. I didn't have like the last cup wasn't completely full. And so I added in some red lentils just to, mm -hmm. cause they'll dissolve and make it thicker. And then I usually use Hannah yams, but I had some regular um, yams that needed to be used up so they wouldn't go bad and wouldn't get all those dark bad spots on it that someone was talking about. And so I used the regular yams in that. So I'm anxious, I'm gonna have that for dinner tonight. Okay, I guess. Doesn't that sound good? I love split pea soup, you guys. So if you like split pea soup, check out that recipe. It, it's one of my favorites. I did that stew for lunch, so I'm having my chopped salad. You have salad. to have chopped salad, yeah. So Joe Serrano lives in Mexico. Ooh. And his dad, Nick, see if you know what this is, nicknamed him Cabeza de Papa. Or Cabe, Cabeza de Papa. Well, Cabeza is your head. Potato head. Potato head. Yeah, yeah, papa. Not, pa not, papas. not, not, yeah. Papa. Yeah, not papa. Papa. Cabeza de papa. Potato head. head. head of the that is head great. Head of the potato. So, yeah, our grandkids, I, I'm Lito, and she's Lita. 
of course, short for our abuelo and abuelita. Yeah. So our anyway. grandkids are bilingual. So their um, their father, their papa, is from Honduras, and yeah. so they're bilingual. So. Yeah. So when they get to our house, it, it, this is air fried now. We start hearing the request for papas fritas. Yes. Lito papas fritas, por favor. So. And they, uh -huh. our grandkids, really like Japanese sweet potatoes. But they, oh, I, I need one of those containers so I can show them. Okay, and then we got to start winding up here. Okay. Um, so the grandkids really like these, but they like them after they're air fried. And so, you know, I, once again, you chill these and then something magical happens. They get so much better when you reheat them. And so I will score, I'll cut these in half and score them and air fry them and they just eat them up. They don't like the skin. They just like the potato part. So I just wanted to show you how we store our potatoes. We just take these and we stand them all up on end like this. And then put them in the refrigerator this way. Of course, when it's full, they all stay standing up. And that way, the weight of the potatoes on top are not crushing the potatoes that are on the bottom. And we do that with all of the potatoes. That's how we store them. And they will last a whole week in the refrigerator for us that way. We discovered that if we laid them down and the potatoes on top squished the ones on bottom, the ones, especially the sweet potatoes on the bottom, got really watery and juicy and the skin got all soppy and they just weren't as pleasing. Um, and they didn't look pleasing and they just didn't taste as good because they got squished. But we also do that with the Yukon Golds. We stand them up and we discovered if they don't have a lid over the top of them, then they don't get all moist and um, they seem to last longer. And so that's, what, that's how we store them. Okay, I got three questions quick in a row here. Yes. Um, uh, well, first one from Tiffany. Did you grab any deals from Amazon Prime books? Tammy actually posted this on, on Facebook to all you folks. Uh, you scored a bunch of uh, three for the price of two books. That's, yes. That was our big deal. We bought a lot. I bought... A no new kitchen appliances, ladies. Yeah, there wasn't really... Gentlemen. <laughs> there really wasn't anything that we needed. Um, you know, we have... I looked for video gear to see if there was any, uh, you know, YouTube gear that would help us, but it wasn't the exact make and mo or model uh, of things that I was like I, I yeah, looking as, for. Yeah, as far as kitchen stuff goes, we pretty much have everything that we need and probably some things that we don't. I think I have five or six pressure cookers. Yeah. So, it's but, ridiculous. But books are... But what? books... So my daughter um, texted me and said um, that she had just found out that Amazon was having children's books were buy three, pay for two. Oh, it was children's books specifically. Yes, and so I said, send me a list for Christmas. Yeah. And I'm so she sent me a list, and then, of course, I went on and found, you know, we like to have books here, too. We like to have bilingual books um, for the kids, and so those are often more expensive. And so it was quite a savings. I was so happy. So they started arriving yesterday. We just got some more today. And then I have more that are supposed to arrive on Tuesday, I think. Mm -hmm. And What about uh, you guys? What did you guys get? Um, um, I had a train of thought. I'm sorry. This potato, the question is from the, the price per pound. Sarah is asking, what is your cost per pound for the Japanese sweet potatoes? She finds them very expensive. Are they $1.69? They've, no, they've gone up to $1.89 now. They okay. were, last year they were $1.69. Right now we're paying $1.89 across the board for the Hannah's, the Japanese, the Stokes, or the Garnets um, at, for organic at Whole Foods. <coughs> Sorry, you guys. So $1.89 a pound is what we're paying. <clears throat> okay. Well, you're and then I can't remember how much um, Costco has that bag of sweet potatoes. It's like seven ninety nine. That's very economical. That's like under a dollar a pound. Yeah, it's yeah. like five pounds. I don't know. Is it five pounds? Ten pounds? It's more I don't like know. ten pounds. I'd have to look that at the bag. That bag is like that. It's got to be at least ten pounds. Okay. And it's like eight bucks or something. Yes, I think it's like seven ninety nine. Yeah, it's under a dollar a pound. But but garnets, like I say, is is they're good. Yeah. So okay. our Costco used to carry um, Yukon Gold 
potatoes that were organic and they haven't had those forever. So, okay. so uh, we do these. Yeah, and then Tiffany's question about finding deals just brings to mind that we want to thank all of you folks out there. We had put out a couple of communications mm. about uh, opportunities on Amazon and Amazon had us clean up our categorized uh, shopping page. And the amount of support from from you, the the viewers, was was just amazing this year. Thank you and, so much. And so that will allow us to advance some of our technologies here. So thank you so much for your support and thinking of entering Amazon through the Nutmeg Notebook door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I made that mention in one of the emails. Yeah, anytime you go to Amazon through the nut through the, the Nutmeg link, Nutmeg Notebook link. Uh, even if you're not buying from our shop, the you know a small commission does happen. So you know we are affiliates of them, and that does support the channel. Yes. So, so thank, uh, you, thank very you so much. much for your your just tremendous support this year. It was great. Yeah, it was wonderful. Uh, so we're going to try out some new technology tomorrow. Uh, well, th behind the scenes, nothing that they will no, see. No, nothing that they just will see. Just our setup. But it will help us. It's yeah. going to help us tomorrow. Yeah. We want to be talking to Dr. Goldhammer. Yeah. So don't forget, tomorrow at 4 p.m. Pacific time, we will be interviewing Dr. Alan Goldhammer from the True North Health Center. So we're really excited. And then a week from tomorrow will be the nutrition professor, Timory Hagenberger. And so we're real excited to have her, too. Yeah. Suzanne is asking, are Japanese sweet potatoes specifically called Murasaki's at Trader Joe's? Yes, yes they, they are. are. They are called. So that is this type of potato. And most of theirs are small like this, the Murasaki. And they aren't organic, but I have bought them as well. Um, and that is what they sell at Trader Joe's. Okay. And Susan Johnson's asking for potatoes in the Breville. Yes. The air fryer setting on the Breville generally compared to the bake settings on the Breville in terms of time. Um, so I would not, was she saying air fry? Let me read it. For potatoes, how does the air fryer setting on the Breville generally compare to the bake setting on the Breville in terms of time? There's not that, a direct correlation because no. the bake is going to be something, you know, if you're baking potatoes in the Breville, it'll be an hour. But if you're air frying potatoes, and on super convection, you got to push that little fan button and mm -hmm. you can hear the motor rev up. That's a 20 minute conversation, you know, one third of the bake setting for like the Yukon goals, which is commonly what we'll put in here to achieve Papa's fritas. So, uh, or fried but, potatoes. So that's two, di the, that's two different cooking styles that you're talking about. So if I'm going to bake potatoes, which I baked the Yukon golds in my Breville Smart Oven Air today, but I used the bake cycle. So you turn the knob to bake and then you bake these. I did not air fry these. So we, we in particular, like our potatoes to be baked first and then we air fry them. Um, we have tried making french fries That's kind of an air. essential thing. And, and that is, we have a um, Breville Smart Oven Air fried potatoes video. We do. So, and, and it goes into all the, but they have to be baked in advance. It's just not the same if you don't. You wind up with wet, soggy, limp potatoes instead yeah, of something they, crispy makes, and crunchy. There's Something happens to the starch in the potatoes and they just turn into better fries or just better air fried potatoes once they've been baked and chilled and then recooked. And so that's two different things. So we would still bake these first. Yep. Uh, and then Kathleen Dow was asking when we eat the potatoes, uh, do we eat the skin? The, we eat everything we here except we might tear off this little yes. this little tip here is hard and you know you don't, don't want to break a tooth on that the little but root, yeah root whenever tip. we can we're eating the skin um, we like the texture we like the flavor we like the chew mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's probably good for you somebody will say so yeah. so yeah if you can there's chew there's a it, lot of fiber in that skin if you, if you can chew it we eat it yes so, absolutely. Um, mm. Okay, I this all up. just looks so good, you guys, and it smells amazing in here. Between all of this that cooked and the split pea and yam soup that just got done, oh my gosh, it just it smells amazing. I wish we could share the smell. I wish you guys would come and help us eat some stuff. It would be fun. We do miss getting yeah. together with people for meals. Um, now, Gina and Jesse are talking about this. Um, uh, in the chat here, but uh, do, do you score the whole potato or cut potatoes? Okay, so when I am, 
where's that knife? Do you still have the knife? Let me I put grab them the over knife. there. Okay. So, so all of the, let me show you. Some of them are two ninety nine up in the Seattle area. Wow, that's you know, expensive. Okay. On the you know this is the potatoes are and the salads. That's kind of like the main stuff that we eat: the grains, the starches, and and the greens. We're not buying stuff that we used to buy uh, years and years ago for you know nine dollars. Well, a look pound at how expensive meat and cheese is. Meat, yeah. meat and cheese is very expensive. So, uh, you know, 10 years ago, I would have cringed if I was paying two bucks a pound for a potato. I would have thought that was ridiculous. But now I look at that tasty potato and it's, you know, one of the main courses. And mm -hmm. so at, at this point, I, I know that you know, I don't bat an eye because that, that comes with the territory of, of eating healthy and, and so forth. So, um, right. So because yeah. everything else that we eat, like all the, um, the grains and the mm -hmm. beans, all of that is, you know, relatively inexpensive. So what I do is I always cut the sweet potatoes in half. And I have a video um, all about potatoes, how to air fry them. And then I'll just show you, I'll try to show you here if it's showing. And then I'm just cutting this diagonally. And then I'm going to cut it diagonally the other way. And I do that before I air fry it. And then, I don't know that you can see. but Yeah, you see? it's coming across. We even got a little extra sunshine going on right, right there. Now. The sun's coming in. And so do you see? And then once it's air fried. Take it out of the sun. That's washing it out. Is it? Okay. Go out of the sun. There you go. And then, or can I move up closer? How about I go stop the sun? Um, and so... All the little edges where I just scored it, all those little edges are going to get air fried and they'll just get just a little tiny bit crispy around the edges. And then when you go to eat it, this is what the grandkids love. Then I can peel this, peel these away from the skin one little piece at a time. And they just love it. I love it. And then if you want to drizzle a little bit of balsamic vinegar or a flavored one over the top of it, then it drops down in there in between all those little cut edges and the flavor just goes all the way through. But, um, and that's just kind of like gilding the lily because they're super delicious, just air fried and just eaten just like this. But I do that to the Japanese sweet potatoes and to the Hannah's before I air fry them. And then on the Yukon Golds, you can just cut them in half and do it. Or I have a video on making smashed potatoes and air frying them. Or you can take them, these and cut them into yeah. fries. The name of that video is Smashed Potatoes in the Breville Smart Oven Air. That's the name of that one. I yeah, and then there's one on how to air fry um, potatoes. I did a whole video on that. And then I did a whole video on how to bake potatoes. Yeah as well okay. but you know um, all winter long this is what we'll be eating tons of this with beans and salads and greens because it's delicious and then tom will also be eating rice and you know i love my oat groats so um, i'll be eating oat groats as well and i have a video on that how to make oat groats so they come out kind of like brown rice but oh they're so delicious Yes. TS is asking if you can't find or afford organic potatoes, is it better to not eat the skin? Or can you just, and I'm adding, not, she didn't say, or can you just scrub them really good with the brush? You know, I'm not, I'm not sure. That's a really good question that we will save for Timmery. Um, I'm thinking that I would peel them. But let's ask Timmery because Nick, uh, she is week a, a next week, next a time, week, not tomorrow, a no, week from tomorrow. A week from tomorrow, we'll have the nutrition professor on, and she is a college professor and a registered dietitian, and she is plant based, yeah. and she will have the answer yeah. for that. Susan, thank you for that super chat. Yeah. That's so kind thank of you. you. Thank so you so much. And uh, that's a great that's a great question that we'll ask her to know for sure what we should do. But you know. All of the plant-based doctors say that it's better to eat all of the plants, whether they are conventionally grown or not. That's, you did, everything does not have to be organic. And if you look up the Dirty Dozen list, um, that's kind of a nice little guide. It always tells us, I think it's the 15 um, 
fruits and vegetables that we should buy organic because they test high for pesticides. And then they also give us the Clean 15, which are the ones that it's perfectly okay to buy and eat everything um, when they have been conventionally grown. So, but just know it's okay. Go ahead and buy the conventionally grown. It's better to eat the plants. Uh, Jeanette uh, Kelly is asking, when you do convection, only after phase one, once they have been baked, that's air fry time. The air fry time yes. is on top of the, you bake them for the full hour. They're usually in the refrigerator for a day or two or three. Then they come out and get cut and go in the air fryer to become crispy and crunchy. Mm -hmm. So two different processes. That's because right. Because these, you know, these, you know, these are snack potatoes on, on just happen to be walking by the fridge. One might fall into my hand and I eat it on my way upstairs to my mm -hmm. office. Um, so, um, so yeah, yeah, two separate, two separate, uh, operations there. That's right. But something does happen to the starch when it yeah. has been baked and then refrigerated. And that's when it makes the best, uh, mm. fries mm. or smashed potatoes. Mm. In fact, we like the smashed potatoes better than fries. Randy's at 35 degrees today where she lives. We're, <gasps> we have over Whoa! 90. We're, we're, we're that's at, chilly. It's 96 degrees here right now. Wow. Four degrees under 100. Yeah, so. but, but we're having kind of like a little mini heat wave again. Yeah, it's been going on for a week and got another week to go. Yeah, it's uh, crazy. Let's see. Uh, potatoes it, are one of the dirty dozen, and they should okay. be peeled if you can't buy organic. That's Thank what you. Jesse's pulling off. Great. So. Well, that's what I thought, but I didn't want to say because I wasn't 100% sure. And so thank you so much for sharing that. Um, that's what I had thought. So okay. do, do peel those potatoes. Don't eat the skin. But that's, but that's okay. You'll still get to enjoy potatoes. Yeah, you're not going to, like you said, it's better to eat a peeled potato than to not eat a potato that's at all. That's right. That's right. And for me, you guys, I just find that potatoes are extremely filling and satisfying to me. And I can't, I can't overeat on them because they're so filling. And so, and I love to stuff potatoes, whether it's a Japanese sweet potato, a uh, Hannah yam or a garnet. I love to take chili. I like, um, I like the black and red, the black and red lentil chili from Fat Free Vegan. I love that chili recipe. I always double it, and um, that one is a chili that even people who eat the standard American diet are very receptive to. It's delicious. So I like to take that chili and then some of the um, oven roasted butternut squash. We'll take and put a little bit, this is great for setting up a buffet, although I know we're not doing buffets right now, but or just to feed your family. So I'll set up um, a pressure cooker full of cooked brown rice and then the black and red lentil chili and then I will oven roast some kabocha squash or you could also do the delicata. Um, just because it looks so pretty like this and I'll put a platter of that out. So we'll put rice in the bottom of the bowl, we'll put the lentil chili on top, and then we'll put a, a couple um, chunks of squash on top of that. And what's really fun, it sounds weird but it's really good, is if you sprinkle this with cinnamon before you roast it in the oven and put the cinnamon side down and let that kind of caramelize with the squash, that is a really fun way to serve the squash you on top of the cinnamon, chili. Cinnamon glazed squash brulees on top of your chili. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's really good. That little bit of cinnamon, you know, goes really well with the spiciness of the chili. Or if you like Chef AJ's red lentil chili, which we like, but we like to add dark red kidney beans to it, a couple cans of dark red kidney beans just to. Um, kind of boost it a little bit and that's good either over a potato or rice or oat groats and then top it with some squash so and that sloppy joe's you know made with lentils um, i have a barbecue lentil recipe on the blog that makes a huge amount uh, that's just great served over any kind of potato, but I especially love them over one of the sweet potatoes. And it's just a lovely contrast, sweet and then that spicy. <laughs> What's Jessie up to? She's got 10-year-old split peas. 
oh man, I'm really getting hungry and all we have tonight is more of that very crunchy <laughs> veggie. We had that happen once. Huh? Tammy was going to throw oh, something out goodness. because the, the lentils just didn't, it was lent, no, it was split peas. It was split peas. They didn't cook. They must have been. I got them out of, this was before the pandemic, I got them out of the um, bulk bins at Whole Foods and they must have been really old because I could not get those to soften up. I even cooked them a second time. The whole thing, the yeah, because they were it, in a recipe. They were, yeah, it was, I had the soup, you know, it said it was done, went to serve it. Oh my gosh, thank goodness it was just for Tom and I. And then I recooked it for the full length of time again and it did not get soft. I was gonna pitch it, and Tom said, nah, keep it, I'll eat it, and he did, but it was terrible. Jesse said hers were way more than 10 years old. So, hey, um, So the moral to that story is to buy your lentils and beans from someplace that you know has a lot turnover. of turnover. And I would have thought that Whole Foods did, but apparently not on split peas. Okay. I guess a lot of people don't like split pea soup, but I love it. So we need to do our final announcements. Okay, so the final... Reminders and announcements. Okay, so the final announcements. Tomorrow, 4 o'clock. If you, if, you, if you have a Facebook group or a, a block of friends you want to share, or, uh, you're going to send out... Did you send one out today for tomorrow's send? I did um, on Instagram and Facebook. I did a post all about um, interviewing Dr. Alan Goldhammer tomorrow. So you could just go on my Nutmeg Notebook Facebook page and you could share it. Yeah. You can share it on your own and Facebook or in any um, plant-based groups that you belong to uh, because we're not allowed to do that in any of those groups because that's considered self-promotion and groups um, frown on someone self-promoting yeah. themselves. And we, we do have a number of questions that have been emailed in to us and mm -hmm. we'll be... Uh, you know, if there's time. Correlating those and seeing what we can get through. Tammy has a number of questions she's going to be asking Dr. Goldhammer. And I'm unsure if there's going to be time at the very end for live questions. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make a commitment that there will be. Uh, if there is, we'll use it, but no commitment there. But um, but yeah, we're looking forward to that tomorrow. So, And then um, and in closing, week. you know, the link for the NHA is uh, is in the show notes of this video again. And you'll get this magazine with Tammy's recipes in it if you make that request when you sign up, if you haven't already. And thank you to everyone that did. Um, yes, that's fantastic. And uh, Timory Hagenberger, the nutrition professor, is next Sunday, oh. a week from tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We'll remind everybody of that tomorrow, yeah. maybe. We have so many people we want to interview you guys. It's going to be so much fun. Okay. So and there's anything else I'm forgetting? I don't think so. I hope. Oh, the um, Holland Bowl Mill. Is still going. Promotions um, that are exclusive to Nutmeg Notebook followers. That's for the rest of the month of October. I did a Facebook post about that um, again today just to remind people this is a good time to do your holiday shopping or if you've been wanting um, a piece of Holland Bowl Mills, either the fruit bowl or the chopping bowl or um, one of the smaller bowls or the heart-shaped bowl. I mean, there's so many. We have a video that we did where we interviewed Corey from Holland Bowl Mill. Called so, the, bowl, the Holland Bowl Mill Bullathon. The Bullathon. And it's about three, it was, it's from October 24th. So it'll just be a couple of videos. September back, 24th. September 24th in mm -hmm. the library. We are, we're not to October 24th. Yet. That's in the future. That is in the future. Are you living in the past? <laughs> I should. I you should go should live, live in, in the, the past. past. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. This was really fun. I hope it was informational for you. I hope that this helps a little bit with the potatoes. And um, mm. thank you guys for showing yeah. up. And all um, three moderators were here today. Oh my hey, gosh, you, you guys know, are amazing. We had that glitch last week where my batteries went dead. So thank you, all three of you, for being here. Randy and, and Tiffany and Jesse, we're all three here today. We started with all fresh batteries today so that nothing well, could happen. Well, you and the receiver did. I'm on old batteries. Oh, you're on old batteries. Because I don't Ooh. talk as much as you do. Wow. And so I don't use hmm. as much electricity. <laughs> what I'm going to do with him. I just don't know. I cannot stop this man. What can uh, I say? SB, I don't know if the fires in Napa have affected the Rancho Gordo. What I did hear on the local news is that it's affecting the wine crops um, rather badly. Yeah. And they're out there with blowers trying to blow the ashes off the wine. 
And we also had on that same news channel up in Northern California, they've got blowers out blowing off the hemp crop because the ashes are affecting the hemp crop. <laughs> oh my gosh. And, yeah, and the all- ash has, was really, really bad. Like we are, you know, quite a distance from there. And um, we, we, had, got covered a, in ash, we yeah. had everything outside was covered in ash. So um, the pool, the patio furniture, the patio, cars, everything was just covered in ash. So we feel really bad for all the people. I, mm. A gal that I follow on Instagram that lives over there lost her home. Her home burnt down. And, you know, they had to evacuate in the middle of the night. So uh, it's really tragic. My heart just goes out to everyone over there. Okay. So anyway, um, thank you so much. You guys, hope to see you all tomorrow. I'm Tammy. I'm Tom. And we help you get Get healthy healthy and and stay stay healthy healthy one meal meal at a time. time. Bye. Bye, you guys. Now it's time to eat.